Maybe you want to look at Roche. I have to make like a Mongo database of all the pharmaceuticals in the world. I think that'd be good. So you can just like have one uniform like system. I guess Lebrakizumab ended up going to Eli Lilly. Glofitimab. This is a bispecific CD20, CD3. There's a bunch of these out there, including Roche's other CD20, CD3. They have two. The CD3 is the T-cell um, attachment point, so a lot of people do bispecifics to CD3. Tiragolumab is their ticket. Okay, so here's the CD19 bispecific, I think. Or 1BBL. Yeah, it's bispecific antibody like fusion protein, so it's got a co stimulatory domain. Okay, I think I understand how it works. This looks like a Wilms tumor target. HLA2, Wilms tumor 1, CD3. Interesting. Intracellular Wilms tumor in AML. WT1 is an important um, protein. Mage target has never been a great target, Mage A4, but they're also bringing CD3 into it, so. I don't know if the, the BTK inhibitors will work there. What do you guys think? I gotta go look into that, I guess. Lunasumio. When did Lunasumio get approved? This is uh, Mosan. Mosan Etuzumab. I think that's a 1222 2022. So this thing just got approved two months ago. Let's see if they have a website. Third line follicular. Injection. How would you guys like one of those? Right in your eye. Give you that shot right here. No, you don't want it? Shot right in the eye. No, you can't really get to the back of the eye with just eye drops, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know. The Roche Phase 3 pipeline's looking a little bare. They report earnings tomorrow with Merck. We got Facebook tonight. I'm sorry, Meta. Uh, let's see. Oh, they're repurposing Belovaptan for PTSD. At least they're trying something. Gene therapy for Pompeii, that's cool. Do I believe in gene therapy? I mean, there's FDA approved gene therapies, so <laughs> it's kind of hard not to believe in it. It's not like a boogeyman or... Baxter did a big acquisition. I don't think they have organic growth. I'll have to take a look. December 13th, 2021, they closed Hill Rom. Medication delivery, that's like pumps, clinical nutrition, it's like TPN, right? Surgery, acute therapies, whatever that is. Like ER stuff, I don't know. Biopharm solutions. And now you have all the Hillrom stuff. <coughs> so there's no growth, it looks like, outside of their acquisition.
All right, I see they have the acquisition impact, but I want to see how it impacted cash flows. Export CSV data. Okay, interesting. I haven't thought of that. Let me try that. Sounds cool. We on Wall Street would like to thank you for your amazing insight. Hadn't considered that possibility. With our trillions of dollars, your insight has changed the way we're going to do business. All right, so cash flows are well above net income, but they have a bunch of capex. For that quarter. Pretty meager cash flows to support a $38 billion company, I gotta say. I mean, just looking at the revenue, it's three times sales. There ain't no cash flow. Let's see if they had any in Q3. Not really. Could be a good short. It's a no growth company. Short Baxter, long Intel, is that what we learned today? Okay, there's some impairments here. Yeah, Novo is doing really well. Everybody knows that. The problem is what's next, I guess. And can you get a sense for their longevity of the product and how big those markets could really get? They're one of the largest uh, pharmaceutical companies now. Oh, right. So that's 772. Interesting. I mean, there's really no cash flow here. 300 million in free cash flow. It's 100 times earnings. That's obviously just over three quarters. If I add, be really generous, give them 465. And they had more cash flow last year with, with without Hillrom, right? So if you look at that, they're doing uh, 19 times last year's free cash flow. I wonder if that's uh, what's going on this year that's obscuring free cash flow. I haven't looked at this company very much, but it's certainly, it's all priced in. <laughs> it's all priced in. I guess Baxter's uh, suffered a bit. All right, so we're looking at Gilead real quick. I'm just gonna throw on some jeans. Okay, so Lenka Capivir is actually approved. Sun Lenka. It's a fascinating drug. It's, H it's for HIV. You take it every six months. Isn't that crazy? What a game changer. I'm pretty sure at least that's how you do it. Every six months, amazing. Loris Labs, I, I'm familiar with them. They they make antivirals. They um, they make nucleotides. Really, they're more of like a CRO, CDMO. Gilead can probably get to a cure. I mean, this is close enough. I mean, it's two shots every every year. I mean, that's pretty good. You know, I, I want to make an HIV cure myself. It's like one of the biggest scientific... Uh, I've worked with the team, Richard. I've had as many as 10, 15, 20 analysts. One of the biggest scientific uh, endeavors, you know, goals that you could possibly uh, achieve. Nanobots is just a silly concept if you know medicine. Well, there's big, mar big margins for the branded companies, uh, Koshank. Um, Gilead's doing really well with HIV right now. Uh, waste in the body is is cellular and in solution. It's it's not this idea of a nanobot is is not the right way to look at it. The body is a bunch of nanobots, right? So waste in the body is disposed of by the body. Um, I think if you look at the scale, you know we have things like lysosomes and things like that that, that do the job. So 
there are so many roadblocks to curing HIV. It's it's almost insane to even think about it. But um, the main one is is this uh, sort of dormant HIV that you know is very hard to excise. Uh, it's very hard to get cellular penetration in, into blood cells. So if you could conceivably get every, you know, CRISPR into every blood cell, you know, you might be able to do it, but it doesn't take much for, there just needs to be a small population of HIV cells to create a new clone. Yeah, HIV drugs are antiretroviral drugs, but in India, it's a bit different from the U.S. Like Loris, um, making the generics, that's really different from the U.S. where they're very expensive and the nu nucleotides are no longer really the main medicines. It's a long story. But yeah, the generic market is very tough, I would agree, for the ARVs. But injectable generics? Uh, I, don't, I don't tend to focus on the generic market too closely. So you got to have your ear to the ground, you know, to really understand what's going on there. So Gilead is a new COVID drug. Oh, are they doing an oral? Oh, that's interesting. So they want lenacapavir to be an oral as well. There's a BNAP combination for HIV cure. That's not going to work. None of those are going to work. Vaccines would be interesting, but it doesn't look like they have very much going on in the pipeline. Long-acting HIV treatment. Mm. I guess they're just going to like trying to have as long of a treatment period as possible. But this is a really meager pipeline in, in an infectious disease. I guess they probably are uh, more interested in oncology in terms of pipeline. No thoughts on biohacking. It seems like a silly concept, silly idea. I wouldn't pursue it if I were you. There's the IRAC-4 inhibitor. That's kind of been a disappointing space. Yeah, I guess all the action for Gilead is in this big partnership they have. Darkus.